Venus and Mars get close, Saturn shines bright, and we take a look at a comet traveling through our solar system. Let's go out and explore the night sky together for July of 2023. I'm Michael Martin, and this is Late Night Astronomy. Whether you're a casual fan of space or a veteran stargazer, everyone loves a meteor shower and you don't need any equipment whatsoever to go out and enjoy it. All you need to know is when and where to look. To do that, let's load up my favorite astronomy app, Sky Safari, to see where you need to look to see the Southern Delta Awkwards meteor shower at the end of this month. This shower is going to be a better show for my friends in the Southern Hemisphere, but those of us in the North may still see a few more meteors than normal during its peak. Go outside around midnight on the night of July 30th into the morning of the 31st and face towards the east. There you will find the constellation Aquarius, where this meteor shower will emanate from. Those of you in the Southern Hemisphere can on a good year expect a rate of 15 to 20 meteors per hour. And for those of us who live in the Northern Hemisphere, expect something more closer to five meteors per hour. Sadly though, regardless of where you live this year, a nearly full moon will wash out all but the brightest meteors for the 2023 shower. Don't be too discouraged by the meteor shower this month because one of the best ones of the year and my personal favorite, the Perseids, is coming up in August and we'll have a lot more to say about that then. But let's not be too hard on the moon for the month of July. If it's going to be out there, we might as well go out and try to enjoy it. You don't need any equipment at all to go out and enjoy the moon, but a nice pair of binoculars or a telescope is going to help you explore some of the lunar features. Let's begin this month by taking a look at the phases of the moon, beginning with a full moon on July 3rd. Third quarter moon July 9th, new moon July 17th, and first quarter moon July 25th. The moon pairs up nicely with some of the brighter planets with Saturn on July 7th, Jupiter on the 11th, Mercury on the 19th, and Mars on the 20th. My favorite time to go out to observe and image the moon is between its new moon and first quarter phases. Take out a pair of binoculars or a telescope between the dates of July 19th and July 25th to study the ever-changing lunar surface from night to night between these two phases. If you're into astrophotography, use an adapter to connect your phone to the eyepiece of your telescope. Using that technique, I was able to take these videos of the moon earlier this year, showing off the differences from night to night of the craters and shadows stretching across the lunar surface at various magnifications. If you're able to take any pictures of the night sky this month, please be sure to share them with me over on Instagram at Late Night Astronomy. As we turn our attention to the planets, we come across our main event, which is the close approach between Venus and Mars that occurs early this month on July 1st. Go outside right after sunset and face towards the west. Venus will be the first object to pop into view, and as the sky continues to darken, you will eventually be able to make out a faint red object about three and a half degrees away from it, which is the planet Mars. I plan on viewing this event through my new pair of Orion 10x50 binoculars that I just bought. They give me about a 6.5 degree field of view, which will frame these two objects perfectly for this event. If you own a telescope, move up to higher magnifications and check out the crescent phase of Venus, which shows up nicely around 50 times magnification in my telescope. Surface details on Mars are going to be more challenging, but see if you can make out any of its disk at around 100 to 150 times magnification. Venus and Mars continue to get lower to the horizon each night and look for Mercury to move right in between them as we approach the end of the month. Let's switch our attention now to the early morning sky where you'll find Jupiter high enough for decent observations and imaging around 4 a.m. That's a tough target unless you're an early bird out there, but Jupiter will become a more appealing object as we get closer to the end of the year. Saturn, on the other hand, will be high in the night sky by 1.30 a.m., providing some excellent opportunities to observe and image it well before sunrise. 
We'll have a lot more to say about Saturn as we make our closest approach to it with opposition at the end of August. I've got videos on how to image Jupiter and Saturn if you're interested in them, and I'll be sure to leave a link to those in the description below. Finishing out the objects of our solar system, we have the recently discovered comet C2023E1 Atlas. To see it, go outside and look towards Ursa Minor, the Little Dipper. While this comet is not predicted to become a naked eye target this July, you should be able to catch some views of it through your telescope and possibly even a pair of binoculars from darker skies. It will appear as a faint smudge against the background of space. The middle part of July when the moon is out of the way is when I plan to go out and try to find this remnant from the creation of our solar system. If you're able to get out to see this comet this month, please be sure to let everyone know about your experience in the comment section below. As we leave our solar system behind and travel into deep space, it's important to point out that regardless of whether you're doing visual observing or astrophotography, getting away from as much light pollution as you possibly can is going to be the key to maximizing the objects that we're going to try to see in this portion of the video. I observed the night sky with a 10 by 50 pair of binoculars and an Orion 8 inch Dobsonian telescope. I image it using a Canon DSLR, Ioptron Skyguider Pro, and 135 mm Samyang lens. Let's begin our exploration of deep space where we ended last month, starting in the constellation Hercules with the Great Hercules Cluster. I just finished processing a picture I took of the Hercules cluster, and I'm always amazed at how dense and rich globular clusters can appear through the telescope and long exposure astrophotography. Moving down from the constellation Hercules, we get to one of my favorite regions of space due to the diversity of objects present in it, the constellation Lyra. Let's begin studying what this constellation holds by enjoying views of one of the brightest stars in the night sky, Vega. At a distance of 25 light years, this bluish white star is a gorgeous sight through binoculars or a telescope. Now let's move down to one of the most famous double stars in the night sky, Epsilon Lyra, more commonly known as the Double Double. What appears as two stars orbiting each other at lower magnifications will reveal themselves as actually a pair of binary systems orbiting each other at higher magnifications. This is a great test of the optics of your telescope, and I can normally split both of them through my 8-inch Dobsonian telescope at around 200 times magnification if the sky conditions are steady. Let's move across the constellation Lyra until we come across the stars Sheliac and Sulafat. Right in between these two objects is the remnant of a star, possibly once like ours, that has shed its outer layers of gas, creating an expanding ring with a dim white dwarf star near the center. We call it the Ring Nebula. I never tire of visually seeing this object. This incredible region of space is a great opportunity to share so many different types of objects with people who are just getting into this hobby through visual observing or astrophotography. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description below to another video I made covering more summer deep sky objects. Those are just some of the incredible things that you can get out to see in our sky this July. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. But most importantly, let everyone know what you're able to get out to observe an image and get some conversations going about the night sky in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.